Hello, lovely humans! Jen Foxbot here. In this episode of Math Mondays, we're continuing our electrodynamics exploration, and we're going to look at motional EMF. Yay! So, why do we care? Well, number one, this is what happens in electric generators, aka how we can create electricity from physical motion. So cool! And it is a stepping stone to get to Faraday's laws, which are super fun and fascinating because it laid the foundation for physicists to discover that the electric and magnetic fields were actually the same force, just different manifestations. So cool. So yeah, it matters. And it's also really fun. All right, so in our setup that we're gonna use to explore motional EMF, we have a magnet, it's purple, because purple's a great color. We have a magnet, it's square, and its direction is pointing into the board, so in that direction. And we have a loop of wire drawn in white with a small little load, let's say a resistor. It doesn't generate a lot of current, but we will try to get current through this resistor. And we will do that by pulling the loop of wire to the right with speed v. Okay, so uh, what is going to happen is that there is going to be a current that flows from the segment A to B. So we need to figure out how and um, why that happens. So the first thing that we need to note is that the force due to the magnetic field on this vertical component um, is given by the general equation for the magnetic field. I know that I skipped magnetic field, so I wrote the equation for the magnetic field force up here. It's um, Q times V cross B, and then remember the cross product pulls out uh, components that are perpendicular. So if we have a section of the wire that is um, not perpendicular to the magnetic field, it won't contribute, um, or the force won't act on that. Um, so we have F mag, and I'll say up, to indicate it's from A to B, um, and that just equals Q V B. Okay, so um, now we can start to ask, what is the EMF? Um, what is the force that starts to push uh, the force per unit charge within this wire? Um, so again, we're going to pull from the definition from the video we did last time. Uh, we have a closed loop. We're going to go around A, B, C, and D, because those are the only parts that are feeling the force to the, to the magnetic field. Um, so we have F magnetic field, and I wanted to note it's little f because it's the force per charge. So we're going to drop this Q, um, and it is dot DL. Um, and because it's the force per unit charge, we just have V, B, and then the only parts of our path from A, B, C, D, F to A that contribute are these vertical segments. Oops, and I need to define that, which is H, and then we have X over here. Boop, okay, so V, B, H. Cool, that is our EMF. I'm gonna move it over here for safekeeping. B, B, H. All right, okay, so, um, da, 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 da. Notes, this integral happens at a single instant in time. Like if we had a photograph or um, a camera that could take a photograph of charges, then we would be like, bloop, and this would be the EMF in that photo. So with time frozen. Um, and then the other thing is that DL points up. Um, so DL has a vertical component like that. And that's just because of the way that the EMF is defined. So then we might start to ask the question, well, wait a second, um, who's doing work in this situation? And again, I skipped magnetic fields, but um, magnetic fields never do work. That is an inherent property of magnetic fields and the physics definition of work. Um, so it's not the magnetic field that is doing work on the charges. Well, who is then? Or what is? We are, because we're pulling the loop. We are using the fact that we eat food, that food gives us energy, 
and we are using some of our energy to move this loop uh, to the right. So um, how much work are we doing? Well, to answer that question, we need to think about uh, what is the work done to move a charge around the loop? So we need to draw another picture. Um, so again, we're gonna, whoops, that was off of the loop. Uh, too many lines on the same loop. So again, we're gonna look at this vertical segment because that's really where the charges are getting their initial push. And uh, so we know um, that because there is a current flowing through this loop, the charges are going to have a velocity in this direction. So um, they're going to have a velocity u. Um, so if this is from a to b, a to b. Um, but we also know that because we're moving the loop right, the charges from a to b are going to get pulled with a velocity v in this direction. And now this kind of doesn't represent our loop. Um, oh, I should say, okay, so we're pulling here. Um, and da, 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 da. so they inherit the horizontal uh, velocity. Um, ba, ba, ba. So um, we should also add in our magnetic force, um, which is going to have a component to the left. Um, which is going to be uh, QUB, but because we're interested in the work done on per unit charge, it's going to be UB. Um, and so the force transmitted to the charge, or sorry, the force is transmitted to the charge by the structure of the wire. Um, and that force is just equal and opposite to UB because that's what we have to counteract. We have to counteract the force of the magnetic field that wants to keep the wire stationary. It wants to keep the charges stationary, I should say. Um, and then we have this force up here, and then F mag here. Um, and then the charges, because they have these two components of the velocity, they are actually moving with the uh, with velocity w um, and if you think about it if you were to uh, move this wire here and you're to focus on one point here you would have a trajectory that is um, that is at an angle like that and even though we don't know the angle we can just set one so we'll call that theta these are actually the same um, and uh, this distance here is h whoops do, 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 do. Okay, so there's a bunch of triangles in there that are really helpful. Yay, trigonometry, it never goes away. Um, also, again, why it's really important to draw a picture. Okay, so now instead of going through this kind of stationary path, um, it's a little bit easier to conceive. We're going, we're, we're following the work done on a charge as it is moving through this loop. Um, I will do my best to draw the trajectory of that charge. So our charge is going to start at A. It's going to move to B again with a distance of H cosine theta because it's this distance here. Um, and then it's going to move to C because this isn't really going to uh, go anywhere. And then it's going to move kind of at a weird, since it's still moving to the right, it's gonna kind of move down like that, and then something like that. Okay, and then we'll call this A prime. Um, so this is D and then this is C. So again, this is as the charge is moving. Um, what did I forget? Cool, 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 nothing. Um, all right, so now we can ask, what is the work done? Um, so work, yay, equals the integral of the pulling force along this path and we end up with this is uh, the magnetic force ub because oof, we said that over there um then then the path is going to be um h cosine theta because that's the only part that contributes um 
and we are going to end up with a sine theta from the dot product. And uh, if we do some trig, you will find that this simplifies to V B H. Hey, wait a second. We already said that. So this is actually really interesting because we got to the same conclusion um, or we found that the work done per unit charge is equal to the EMF, the same conclusion here. Um, but we took different paths and uh, different forces were involved. So that's really interesting and it gives us some insight into what is happening uh, in this loop of wire. To make our lives easier, we can express the EMF generated in a moving loop with a new term. Which uh, is going to be the magnetic flux. And that is taken, it is the magnetic field um, uh, over an area through which the magnetic field is permeating. Um, and so this is the flux of the magnetic field through the loop. Flux. Boop. So for the square loop, uh, square or rectangular loop, um, the area that through which the magnetic field is permeating is the width um, to from B to C times the height from A to B, so just X times H. Um, and so uh, we get B H X. All right. And we also know that as the loop moves, the flux decreases. How do we know that? Well, because the area, we're pulling the loop out of the magnet. And so this area gets smaller, or really X gets smaller. The amount of length of the loop inside the magnetic field gets smaller. Um, and we can represent that by the part that's getting smaller over time. How much smaller does it get over time? Well, the velocity that we're pulling it. So we're going to get B H and then negative B because again, it's getting smaller. Um, so we can define, oh, but wait, we, we don't need to define. We just define something. Um, so this is actually, um, again, the same thing as the EMF. So now we're like, hey, wait a second. The EMF is equal to the negative rate of change of the flux. Boom! Of the magnetic flux. So this is called the flux rule for motional EMF. Um, and it applies to loops of all shapes and sizes that are moving in all different directions. Um, and it also works through non-uniform fields, which is really cool because uh, in here we only have a, uh, a single thing that's changing, which is the size of the area through which the magnetic field is permeating. But if we had a changing magnetic field or if we had a loop that was changing in some different way, let's say H was changing as well, this would still hold. I'm not going to do the proof, but you can look it up if you want. Um, all right. And so then you might be asking, okay, but how do I know which direction the current is flowing? Yeah. Welcome to electricity. Um, so that is actually governed by the right hand rule, um, where basically you kind of, uh, use the right hand rule. You wrap your, uh, fingers around the loop and the, the direction your thumb points is the direction that the current flows. Um, and if you end up with a negative sign, it just means that it's flowing in the opposite direction than what you thought it was. Okay. That was kind of vague. I didn't intend to cover the right hand rule in this video, but I hope that this was helpful. Um, yeah, this has a lot of implications and I'm very excited to use this definition as we explore Faraday's laws. Yay. All right. So please let me know if you have any questions and happy mathing. I'll see you next time, friends. Bye.